All right, today we are doing a um, Desmos activity for exponential functions. And so this is kind of an exploration. So let's take a look at this. It's going to look something like this for you. Now notice it has the definition of exponential functions. An exponential function, f with the base b, is defined by f of x equals b to the power of x, or y equals b to the power of x. Uh, so where b is a positive constant other than uh, other than 1, and x is any real number, okay? So here are some examples of exponential functions, okay? So base is 2, 2 to the x. This one base is 10, 10 to the x. And this base is base 3, 3 to the x plus 1. You can have different operations happening in that exponent like that, all right? So... Let's compare linear to exponential. You've done this already in Khan Academy, but a linear equation has x as a variable right here, not in the exponent, and there's no exponent on the x, right? It's a constant rate of change. It's adding the same each time. It makes a straight line. Uh, but for exponential, okay, x is in the exponent. So remember, exponential has x in the exponent, and there's not a constant rate of change. It is changing, but it's not constant. That's the key word right there, right? So again, it does not constantly change. So it's not adding the same each time. It's multiplying the same number each time, all right? All right, so let's see here, next. Now there's growth. The quantity, the y values increases over time. And then you have decay. The quantity, the y values decrease over time. So, um, we are talking about growth. So, growth increases over time like this. So, you see how it's curving up and to the right. But decay, the quantity of y values decreases over time. So, you see how it goes down to the right. Okay, and they're both curved. Exponential growth goes up to the right. Decay goes down to the right. Okay. For what values of b do we have growth versus decay? So, remember, we are only looking at positive b values okay so we're not talking about negative b's yet what values of b are going to grow or decay so let's decide on growth versus decay and explain why it is growth or decay okay so do you think this is growth or decay well we know that this is decay because it's going down to the right okay it is and just to use our notes what is it it is the quantity of y values is decreasing over time. All right. Cool. Hit submit. Let's go next. Now, is this growth or decay? Well, look at it. It's going up and to the right. The y values are increasing over time. And so let's, I'm going to put my last answer, but I'm going to just put it opposite. Okay, this is growth because it's up to the right. And the quantity, the y values are increasing over time. Okay, or over x. Cool. All right. Then. What causes the growth versus decay? So we want to move the slider for B and find the number where it changes. Now, B to the X. This letter B right here is going to be some number. And when we move this, it's going to change what B is, right? So if you just start playing with it, you see it moves in all kinds of different ways. So let's, let's start with a bigger number like 2. So that looks like exponential growth. If I move it to the right, it gets even more steep. It's more growth, more growth. But I'm going to move it to the left, to the left, to the left. Now you can see how it's getting kind of flatter and flatter until it does what? When B is 1, it's a flat linear line. If it's a linear flat line, that is not exponential. So let's remember that exponential functions, your B value cannot be 1. Okay. I'm going to move the B to the left now. Now you can see right here that we have, and this looks like exponential decay, the further I move it to the left, the steeper it gets on the left side. Now at zero, it's nothing, right? 
But notice, between like 0.1 all the way up to 0.9, I have that decay until I get to 1, right? So there's something about being between 0 and 1 that, that's going to matter. And then after 1, that's a little different. So let's see here. What was the question? What causes growth versus decay? Well, B. If B is greater than 1, it's exponential growth. If B is between 0 and 1, it's exponential decay. All right? Let's go to the next one here. So on the previous slide, you move the slider to find the value of B, where the graph switches from growth and decay. That's not a question. That's a statement. Use the text box to explain growth versus decay. If B is greater than 1, it is, it is exponential growth. But if B is between 0 and 1, it is exponential decay, right? Now, you could write it using these stems. I found that exponential capital when B is less than... less than 1 and greater than 0. And I could use this sentence stem to help us out. I found that growth when B is greater than 1. All right? So there you go. Share with the class. Everything's great. Next. So we, we talked about this B value. Now let's talk about this A value. A, and this is supposed to be a multiplication dot right here. So A times B to the X. What happens with A? So you have just investigated how B influences the graph in terms of growth and decay. So what does A do? On the next slide, uh, you will have a slider for A with the slider and determine how that is shown in the graph. Okay, so now our B value is going to be 2. What happens when we change A? What happens when we change the A value? So right now it's at 5. I'm going to move around a little bit. You can see, hey, it's kind of moving. I'm going to move it all the way to the right. That means it looks like it's kind of going up. And then I move, it, move to the left. It looks like it's kind of going down until it flattens out, right? So the question is, what, what's happening here? So I'm going to put it back on 2. When A equals 2, look at this graph. Um, is there a correlation between that number 2 and anywhere on this graph? Because I see right here the number 2 is on this y-axis. So this y-axis is 2. That number is 2. Well, maybe, I don't know, let's, let's change it. What about 3? What happens? Well, over here, 1, 2, that is 3. Okay, let's try 4. Okay, that is 4. Let's try 5. That is 5, between 4 and 6, right? So it seems whenever I change that A value, that's wherever it hits the Y axis. And we call that a Y intercept, right? So let's, let's talk about that. Slider. The A value is the Y intercept. Share with the class. All right, let's keep going. All right, so what if A was negative? Well, you see how these are only negative numbers? So instead of being above the graph over here, now we're below the graph. What do you call it when it moves like from here down to here? Kind of does this flipping over thing. What's a math word for flipping over an axis? Starts with an R. It's called a reflection, right? So it looks like a negative A reflects across the X axis. The graph reflects, reflects across the X axis. Cool. And that's all the things we needed to know about the properties of exponential functions and graphs. So, um, Make sure you review this information and know this information for any upcoming assignments and tests, all right?